So welcome everybody to today's webinar, Reports for Beginners, Fun with Sitka Templates. Uh, today, we're gonna start by talking about the reporter privacy waiver, move on to how to access the reports, and then look at managing report uh, folders, followed by a look at how to use the reporter, which includes cloning report templates, running reports, and viewing report output. So I'm gonna stop my slideshow here and take us over to the bclibraries.coop website. Um, so some of you may have already done this step. Some of you, if you're brand new to the reporter, uh, this will be the first thing that you need to do. We're gonna go to uh, support, oh, support and Sitka there. And under the basics here, you'll find the reporter privacy waivers. Now, anyone using the reporter in Evergreen or uh, accessing report output has to first sign one of the two waivers. The all staff reporter privacy waiver here gives access just to view the report output, whereas the full reporter privacy waiver gives access um, to use the reporter, set up reports, um, as well as view that output. Um, and this is done because Evergreen has a very powerful reporting tool it can query on pretty much any field in the database um, and libraries are asked and it's uh, you know part of your service management agreement that uh, you're only gonna run reports using your own data. Um, there, if you do interlibrary connect, there are some reports that will ask you to choose your library and other libraries in your federation um, to get counts of different interlibrary connect uh, statistics. Um, and that is of course allowed. Reports are owned by the account that's used to create them, um, though you're able to allow people to view and copy your templates, um, as well as share that output with others in your library or uh, Federation or ILC zone. Um, and we'll go into how to share that and see uh, shared folders uh, in a bit. Um, I will say though, with the reporter privacy waiver in general, it's best practice not to share your username and password with other staff. But if your account has reporter permissions, you really need to make sure you're not sharing it um, because you're the one who signed the waiver and any other staff member, um, if they're using your account, they haven't necessarily signed that waiver um, to have access to the reporter permissions. Um, and if you come in to fill out the waiver, uh, the form here uh, will create a ticket in our ticketing system um, and we'll get back to you right away uh, to get those permissions granted. Switching over to the staff client now, we're gonna go into the reports interface um, and it's not gonna be quite what we want yet, but I wanna show what it's gonna look like. And I'm just gonna make sure my Zoom is nice and big so it's easy to see. So if we go to administration and reports, this is what you'll see if your account doesn't actually have full reports permissions. So you can see it's saying that we don't have sufficient permission to run reports. Um, and if you see this, there's two things to check. One, um, First, check who you're logged in as, because you might be logged in with a generic account for your uh, library, or somebody else may have logged in, you didn't realize that they're still logged in. So check and make sure that you're actually logged in with the report, uh, sorry, with the account that has reports permissions. Um, and if you uh, get to here and you realize you don't have reports permissions, this is when you need to go back um, and sign that waiver. So I'm just going to log out and log back in with an account that has reporter permissions. So now if we go to administration and reports, here we have the reports interface open for us. And you can see that the reports interface is basically divided into two sections. We have the My Folders section and we have the Shared Folders section. And we're gonna be coming back to the Shared Folders, but we're gonna start with the My Folders. 
So there's three main components that are used in the reports interface, and that's templates, reports, and outputs. And each of these components have to be stored in their own folder. Now, templates are where you specify the fields that you're going to have display in your output, as well as what conditions you're going to apply, um, so what filters you're going to use. And templates can be used over and over again. For the reports, it's commonly known as defining a report, running a report, or setting up a report. And that's the process where you schedule when the report's going to run, how often it's going to run, whether it's going to be a one-off or a run on a regular basis. Um, indicate what file formats you want it to come out with, um, who's going to receive the email completion notification when it's finished, um, as well as indicating the values for your filters. So a filter that you're going to see in almost every report template is a library filter. So whether it's home library, checkout, circulating library, um, anytime you go to set up a report, you're going to have to choose your library for the filter. Um, there may be other filters to pick values for, but that one is going to be on almost every single report. And then with your output, that's when Evergreen goes through the database, gathers the records that meet the conditions for the template and what you've indicated when setting up the report and gives you that output file to show you the data you're looking for. And we're gonna look at all of these different pieces um, and hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense as we actually uh, look at them. But for each of those steps, Evergreen has to save a file in a different folder. So when you are brand new to the reports, you don't have any folders to start with, so you do need to set up at least one folder at the very start. So I'm going to click on templates here, and I'm going to create a folder, and I'm going to call it collection. And I'm going to do the same in my reports uh, folders. So I have a subfolder called collection, and the same in output. And you can see the folder name, Evergreen is filling it in with what you already used. So all I need to do is hit create subfolder. You can name your folders uh, whatever works for you. We do recommend thinking about using a parallel naming scheme um, because it does make a, a, it does help when you're trying to figure out where you save different uh, templates and the report uh, definitions and the output that goes with them. So I'm going to do one more uh, set of folders here. So I'm going to click templates again. And this time I want to do uh, circ stats. Um, and you can see that I have the option here to share the folder. So in this case, I'm going to say, yes, we're going to share this folder. And I can share it with Maple or the Public Library Federation. And it looks like we've got a bit of a bug on the training server here where it's displaying multiple times. Uh, in this case, I just want to share it with Maple, which means that any other uh, staff with reporter access at my library will be able to see this folder. So I'm going to create that subfolder. And I'm going to do the same under reports and share that one as well. And the same under output. Now, in some cases, you may choose just to save your template folders. In other cases, you may choose just to share an output folder so that staff can go in and look at the end results as opposed to uh, running the report themselves. When working with shared folders, though, if I open up output here, you can see that it indicates uh, that the folder is shared by having the library code at the end of the name. So in this case, it's shared with Maple, so it's MPL. Um, this will be, if you're sharing it with your library, this will be your library code that displays. Uh, if you're a BC Interlibrary Connect library, for example, and you want to share it with the whole zone, this would show as BC underscore ILC, so it tells you where it's shared with. If I click on CERC stats, I can go to Manage Folder. And here I can create another subfolder. So I can create a folder within a folder. And for this one, I'm just going to select create a new subfolder and go. 
I'm going to call this one monthly. Whoops. There we go. Monthly. Now it's in a shared folder. So I want to make sure it is also shared. You want to make sure if you're sharing that everything in the hierarchy is shared. Um, if you're not sharing everything going up your tree, uh, it can cause problems with display and you'll end up needing to submit a ticket to us and actually have us go into the database to uh, adjust that so that your folders start to show again. So really important to make sure that if you're creating folders within folders and sharing them, that all of the ones in that uh, tree are shared together. So I'm gonna uh, click create subfolder. And now if we look at output, we can expand the search stats one as well. And we see that we've got the monthly folder in there too. Now, if we come down here to the shared folders section, this is where you can see folders um, and templates or report output or report definitions that have been shared with you. So the one that those of you already using the reporter are probably familiar with is the Sitka templates. On our training server here, it's called the Greenland templates. And if we use the arrow to expand, you can see all the different folders that we have. Um, and some of them have folders within folders. For example, if we go to collection, you can see we've got four different folders within the collection folder. Um, so you can find templates here to use uh, for creating your own reports. There also is a search at the top here. So if I know I want to, uh, template that is item count title, but I can't remember where it is. I can put that in. I can choose if I'm going to search all folders or a particular one. So you can see I can choose a particular folder. In this case, I'm going to tell it to do all folders and all fields, so I can choose between name and description. I'm going to click go. And you can see that I now have results of all of the templates with, that have the words item count title in their fields. Um, and this uh, specifically searches templates, not um, output. So in this case, I wanna run the report called title and item count by shelving location and circ modifier. So I'm gonna check the box beside that report template and I'm not gonna run my report yet because we can see here that the owner of this template is Greenland Templates. On the live server, that would show as Sitka Templates. And it's important not to run uh, reports off templates that are saved in other, by, uh, other people's folders. So from the dropdown here, we're actually gonna choose clone selected template and clone it into our own folder. And this gives us control over the template. If we're going through and clearing up old templates in the Sitka folders, and we delete a template, everything that's attached to that template also gets deleted. Um, so if you had been using a template that we replace, um, if you've run it directly off the Sitka templates, um, all of the report definitions and output will go away when we delete that template. So really important to make sure you clone the templates into your own folders before running them. So I've selected clone selected template, and I'm gonna hit submit and I pick the folder that I wanna save it into. So I'm gonna put it into my collection folder and hit saved folders. And we're not gonna look at the template editor today, but that's what uh, has just opened. You can see the uh, name of the template as well. It's showing us the display fields at the bottom. In this case, all we're gonna do is hit save template the save template button is kind of in the upper left, which isn't necessarily where you might expect to find it, um, but uh, that's where it is. So we're gonna hit save template and okay. And now if we expand out our template folders again, using that arrow and clicking on collection, we can see that we now have that template saved in our own folders and it's indicating that it's a clone of an original uh, template. So we're now going to check the box beside that one. This time we are gonna create a new report from selected template, so I don't need to change that in the dropdown. And I'm gonna click Submit. 
And we're now going to fill out the report definition to actually run this report. So to start with, um, as you can probably guess from the bright red field here, the report name is a required field. So I'm gonna call this NPL current collection. Most of the Sitka templates have a template description that's gonna give you some information about what the template, uh, what the report that comes from the template will include. Um, the few that don't have uh, descriptions, we are working to uh, update. So they eventually they will all have descriptions. Um, so you can see from the description that this report is going to give us a count of bib records and uh, items for the owned library listed by shelving location and then by circulation modifier. And it's not going to include deleted or pre-cataloged items. We can also tell from the report columns, the different uh, columns that are gonna display when we run our report. Uh, you can ignore the pivot uh, options here. Um, if you are a super Excel user, um, that might be something that you wanna look into, um, but it's not something that uh, we generally use. We need to select a folder to store the report definition into. Um, so I'm going to save it into my collection folder so that it's in the same folder as the template so I can go back and find it easily if I need to. And the one filter that I need to fill out here is the library filter. So this is a circulating library filter. So I'm just going to select MPL because I'm uh, signed in at Maple Public Library and click add. And then there are two hard-coded filters, and this is uh, the first one here, this call number volume ID not in list minus one. That means that it's not going to include any pre-cataloged items. And the one below, item is deleted equals false, means it's not going to include any deleted items. It's only going to delete, or sorry, it's only going to include items where is deleted is set to false. I think I said that backward. It's only going to include items where is deleted. No, I said that right. Uh, is, is deleted is set to false. So the item is not deleted. Down here under the output options, by default, Excel output and HTML output are selected as well as the bar chart. Um, you can add CSV. You can remove some of these options. You can add a line chart. Um, not all reports output works for charts. So some of them will display the chart, some of them won't just because of the nature of the information in the output. And we're gonna leave the recurring uh, report and recurrence interval for now, because we'll come back to that. So we're gonna run this report as soon as possible. It's gonna send a completion notification to example.user at bc.libraries.coop. And this is coming from the email address saved in the account that I'm logged in as. I can also remove that if I don't want it to come to my account. And I can also add additional emails by putting in a comma and adding in that email um, if I want additional people to get the notification that the report is done. And that notification uh, includes a link um, to the report output, which staff can then go in and look at as long as they have reporter permissions that at least allow them to view the report output. Um, so I'm not actually going to add an additional email there. And then uh, as the last step, I'm going to choose the folder to store the report output. And again, I'm going to choose my collection folder. And now I'm going to hit save report. And if we now go to my output folder and collection, you can see it's actually already completed. Um, so reports that are counting things uh, usually complete very quickly. Um, I'd say 30 seconds to a minute often. Um, reports that are listing things. So if you're getting a list of titles or a list of patrons, those ones generally take closer to five minutes. Um, if a report is a really long running report, we actually get an alert if a report hasn't completed within 15 minutes. Usually that indicates that there's something wrong with the template or something else going on. Um, and we'll then kill that report and then follow up with you um, as to whether we need to help adjust a report um, or 
um, if the report just needs to be tried again um, to run. So if we want to look at the output, if we check the box beside our completed item here, and we've already got view report output showing as default, and I'm going to hit submit. And this actually opens it up in another window that you're not going to be currently seeing because of how the Zoom uh, screen share works. But I ran it earlier um, and so have it right here. So this is the uh, bar chart. As you can see, for something where it's looking at your entire collection, the bar chart is probably not particularly useful. If we go to the tabular output, here we can see the owning library, the circulating library, the shelving location, the circulation modifier, the title count, and the item count. Um, and you can see those numbers can be different because you can have multiple items attached to a single bibliographic record um, if you have multiple copies of an item. So that's why we've got 1,127 items, um, but only uh, 1,060 titles. Uh, one important thing to note here on the HTML output is that if you click on any of the headers for the columns, it will sort for you. So it by default, it was sorting by shelving location here, but we I clicked on circulation modifier and it's now sorted it by circulation modifier. I can switch it back to shelving location. Um, I could switch it to title count if I want to see which, uh, which combinations have the highest title count. Um, so that can be handy. If you're wanting to do more than that, you probably need to open it up um, into Excel, a program like Excel. Now, I'm just going to take us back here. Um, this is the example user email. And so if we click on this, this is what your report output email will look like. Um, so you'll get the title that you, sorry, the name that you gave your report out, uh, report as well as the name of the template that it was run from. And then you have this URL right there. Um, so that's what you or anyone else that you include uh, in the email notification field will receive. So switching back to the staff client here. Now that was a report that um, counted. Sometimes you also want to run reports, as I mentioned, that list things. So I'm going to take us back into the shared folders. And this time, we're going to actually look for the template in the folders rather than search. So under Greenland templates, we're going to go back into collection. And we're going to choose item list by item attributes. Because what we want to do is on the report that we just ran, which counted, there were two items in adult fiction that were using the circulation modifier juvenile fiction or juvenile collection. So we want to know what those items are. So I'm going to switch my limit output to all so that I see everything um, because a lot of our Sitka template folders have more than 10 items in them. And we're going to look for uh, shelving location. Here we go. Shelving location and circ modifier items with selected shelving location and circ modifier. So I'll check the box beside that one. From the drop down again, I'm going to clone the selected templates because this is a Sitka template and we want to put it into our own folder. Again, I'm going to choose collection as my folder and select folder. I'm just going to save my template. And now if I go back into my templates using that arrow and click on collection, I have two report templates in my folder now. And this time I'll choose the shelving location and circ modifier one and run that report. And it's already uh, choosing create a new report from selected template by default. So all I have to do is hit submit. I'm going to call this one adult fiction using juvenile collection. I can put in a report description if I wish, um, and that information will show on the template, or sorry, uh, on the report output. Again, we see the report columns, and you can see there's uh, significantly more report columns that are going to show with this particular template. 
We're going to choose a folder to share the report definition. So I'm going to put it into my collection folder. And you can see here we have quite a few more filters than we did last time that we actually need to make selections for. So to start off, I'm going to choose adult fiction and click add. Now I want to do juvenile collection, or sorry, juvenile collection for my circulation modifier. I could scroll through, but I also can start typing it. Um, and that will drop me down the list. And with circulation modifiers and with shelving locations, if you're not looking for the first one in the list, it can be really handy um, to drop to that rather than trying to scroll through. So now I just have to scroll down a little bit and I choose juvenile collection and add. I choose my library and add. Again, I've got those output options. I'm just gonna leave them as is. Um, we're not quite at recurring reports yet, so we'll come back. I'm gonna leave it at, as, at run as soon as possible. Select my collection folder and hit save report. And now if we go to the output and the collection folder, uh, you can see that that one has actually run right away as well because there's only two items on the report. So I'm gonna select that and go to view uh, output, um, but I'm actually gonna jump to the one I already have open since uh, it'll, it's gonna open in a, another window if I do it from the staff client right now. So you can see this one doesn't actually show a bar chart and that's because the data doesn't, it, it doesn't work as a bar chart. So I'm gonna click on tabular output and here we have the two uh, items that have the shelving location adult fiction, but the circulation modifier juvenile collection. So I can see that that first one where the call number is FIC, probably the circulation modifier is incorrect and the shelving location is correct. But the other one where the call number is YA, possibly the shelving location is incorrect and the modifier is correct. So with the information I have here, I can now take the barcode, go back into Evergreen and item status um, and make uh, edits to these items so that they are using the correct shelving location or uh, circulation modifier. Um, so that's handy how you can have two reports that kind of work together the count to tell you where you need to look and the list to show you uh, what you're actually needing to look for. Um, now we're gonna uh, come back and actually do a recurring report. So if I go to shared folders and templates again, and again, the Greenland templates, this time we're going into circulation and we're gonna go into monthly circulation stats. And again, I'm gonna switch that to all. And what I wanna do is I wanna set up a template that is gonna run a report for me every month that gives me the count of my circulation by shelving location. So I've got the monthly circulation by shelving location, new 3.1. So I'm gonna select that one and again, I'm gonna clone the selected template rather than run the report because I need to put it into my own folders first. So I'm gonna click Submit. I'm gonna put it in my Circ Stats folder this time. And again, all I'm gonna do is click Save Template. So that's now in my Circ Stats. So if I open up Templates and click on my Circ Stats, I now have that template cloned there. I can select it and I'm gonna create a new report from the selected template, so click Submit. Now, when you're setting up a recurring report, there's some different things you wanna think about and do than if you're running a one-off. Um, and often it's a good idea to run the report as a one-off to start with so that you can see what the report output's gonna look like and make sure that it is gonna give you what you're looking for rather than waiting until the first recurring one happens and then realize that the report that you set up isn't actually quite what you need. So a good idea to run it as a one-off to start, but when you're ready to set it up as a recurring report, um, the first thing to think about is that for your report name, you don't want to include dates because the recurring report is going to keep happening and the report name, if like if you call this 
January 2024, that will be correct when it runs in February, but in March, it's still going to be called January 2024. And in April, it's still going to be called January 2024. So we're going to call this one monthly cert by shelving location. We've got the report columns that are going to display. I'm going to put this one into my cert stats folder. And here's another piece that's really important with recurring reports is by default, any dates are real dates. So if we go to the date selector and choose one of the days in January, it's gonna show up as January 2024. Uh, and that's because we're specifically looking at year and month for this uh, filter. But if we set this up as a recurring report, in February, when it runs, we're gonna get the January statistics, which is great. But in March, when it runs, we're still gonna get the January statistics and so on. So when you're setting up recurring reports, rather than using real dates, we want to use relative dates. And you can see when I switch it to relative dates, it now has the option of one month ago. So I'm going to add that. So now when it runs in February, it'll give me January. When it runs in March, it'll give me February. In April, it'll give me March statistics and so on. And I'm going to select my library and click add. Again, I have my output options that I can adjust. And this time I'm going to use the recurring settings. So I'm going to check the box to say that this is a recurring uh, report. I want it to run, oh, I do want it to run once, but uh, once a month. And rather than run as soon as possible, I'm going to want to run it to run on the first day of the next month. So in that case, it's going to be the 1st of February. And I'm going to set it to run at 3 a.m. We recommend setting these to run early in the morning Pacific time um, so that they run while nobody else is using the system and they're there ready for you uh, when you come in. Um, and it's very important to make sure that you're choosing the first of the next month and not the last day of the current month um, because months have different numbers of days. And so uh, to make sure that you get all of the days in the month, you need to make sure you're uh, starting it on the first of the next month. Again, you can add additional emails to the notification. Um, so this might be particularly useful if you're setting up the reports, but somebody else tracks the statistics for you, or if you're setting up, uh, you know, an overdue report, but it's a different staff member that needs the report output, um, setting it up so that it automatically gets sent to them on a monthly basis um, can be very handy because then you don't have to be um, sending them that URL every month. And finally, I'm going to choose a folder to store the report output in. And in this case, I can choose that monthly one that I set up. And I'm going to hit Save Report. And I'm going to go to the output here, and we're going to go to the monthly folder, and then I'll come back to the question in a moment. And you can see that we have a pending item here in our uh, output. Um, so the runtime is February 1st because it hasn't run yet. Um, there's no complete time. Once it runs on February 1st, we'll see that in the completed section. Um, and we'll then see a pending item for March. So we'll then see a, a report that says that it's going to run March 1st. And then it'll continue to do that unless you manually stop the report. And to manually stop the report, you have to come into your reports definitions folder. And for example, in the search stats here and select that and delete the report. You want to make sure you've downloaded and saved locally any um, report output that you need before you delete a report because it will delete all the associated output. Um, and this one isn't going to run till the first of the month uh, of, of February, um, but I have run the report as uh, a one-off already. So you can see this bar chart's a little more useful than what we were seeing before. And in the tabular output, you can see January statistics. I ran it off of January because we just reset the training server, so we don't have statistics um, prior to January yet. Um, and uh, let me just come back to the question. 
For the recurring report, if you set it as relative dates and today is the 18th, when it runs in February, March, does it run for the whole month or from the 18th, the day you set it up? It runs for the whole month. So um, if you're telling it to look at one month ago as the re relative dates, it's going to look at that entire month based on the fact that you set it for the first of the next month. So it'll look at the entire previous month. No problem. Um, now there's a couple things, uh, resources that I want to highlight that will help with some of these reports that we've been looking at. Um, something that you may have already seen, but it is relatively new still, is we have a report definitions examples appendix in the manual now. And this includes commonly used reports, um, primarily recurring ones, but a, there's a few others in there um, that we often get questions about how to run. And so what we've done, and for this one, you can see here's the report we just ran, the monthly circulation by shelving location. And let me just zoom in a touch more on this one. Um, so it tells you where to find that report template, the recurrence interval that we recommend, and it tells you exactly what you're going to be needing to put in. And then it gives you a screenshot showing what your report definition should look like. Um, obviously, you probably want to give your report an actual report rather than name your report, um, but it'll show how the relative um, pieces should be set up. Um, and again, you can see I would have set this up in, in June. Um, so, you know, when you're setting up your recurring report, make sure you're setting it to run uh, for the next current month. Um, but hopefully this is helpful um, because it'll give you, you know, a look at what you should be setting things up because recurring reports can be uh, quite tricky. And we've got uh, a few different ones in there as well. This one um, we don't recommend as a recurring report, though you could run it as a recur recurring report, but there's that title and item count that we did as the first one, um, also showing how to run that one. Um, and it's something to remember with the title and item count and similar reports to that, is these reports are a snapshot of your collection at the moment the report is run. So if you run a report, if you run this report today and then you catalog and run the report again tomorrow, you're gonna have different numbers um, because it's going to reflect what your collection was at that particular moment the report ran. Whereas with uh, reports that are like circulation statistics, you can run those reports again and again, and you're always gonna get the same numbers because your circulation for January, once you're in February, is never gonna change because it's counting how many circulations happened in a particular time period. Uh, so I definitely encourage you to take a look at the report definition examples. Um, the plan is to add more. Um, if there's particular ones that aren't included that you would really like to have examples of how to set up, uh, please let us know by sending in a ticket um, and we'll put those to the top of the list to add. And in addition to the uh, monthly circulation ones, we also do have a monthly patron registration. So we've got instructions on how to set up a recurring patron report as well as the, um, the circulation ones. Now I'm going to take us back into Evergreen and we're going to go into the reports folder here. So if we click on the collection folder, these are the reports that we've run. Um, and this is where the report definitions are stored. And you can see that we have view and edit buttons. So if we click view and I'm doing it for the adult fiction using juvenile collection, you can see what you picked when you set up the report. And this can be really handy if your uh, report name doesn't end up being as descriptive as maybe you need it. So you can see that you ran it on adult fiction and juvenile collection at Maple Public Library. Um, and then we're just gonna go return. There's also an edit option. So if we click on edit here, you can actually change the report name. So we could say we want this to be now 
adult nonfiction. And instead of running it on the adult fiction, we want to run it on the adult nonfiction. But we want to leave everything else the same, and we're just going to hit save as new. So it can be a bit of a time saver um, if you're running a, the same report template with different parameters multiple times. Uh, the one thing to keep in mind, though, is that you can't edit recurring reports currently. Uh, if we go over to the CERC stats folder and we go into edit there, you can see that the date shows as object object and is bright red here. Um, this is a bug that we've reported. Um, so it's currently not possible to edit an existing recurring report. So if you do need to change something about your recurring report, and the most common change is people changing the email address that it goes to, you do need to stop the existing recurring report and set up a brand new one. Um, but we are monitoring that bug because it would be uh, great if one day uh, recurring reports could be edited. Um, and we just had a question in the chat. Is there a template for ILLs? So if we go into the shared folders, Greenland templates, and again, of course, Sitka on the live server, um, we have a folder called Intra-Federation ILL Stats. And just making sure we're seeing them all. Um, so there's a few different templates that you can find there, including um, Federation and Library inbound and outbound. So if you do Interlibrary Connect, uh, these are reports that you probably need to be running. And if we come back to the definitions here, the examples, and I'll just page back here, um, we do have examples for the library outbound and inbound ILCs. Um, because these are ones that if you're going to run them, we recommend setting them up to run on a monthly basis so that you don't have to go in and run it every month. It just does it for you. Um, does that answer the question? Perfect. So that takes us to the end of today's content. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm going to stop the recording now.